Hey, what's up everyone? Sam here from Wall Street Mastermind. I'm here today with uh, another client interview for you guys, um, this time with Grant. And uh, Grant's a really great guy. He uh, goes to a non-target school uh, in the South and uh, joined Wall Street Mastermind in June of 2019, um, so about four months ago. And uh, he, at the time, he uh, hadn't started recruiting for summer 2020 yet, um, so it was a little bit late for that, uh, and was just starting to look into it, um, but was obviously feeling behind. Um, and from a relevant experience standpoint, you know, he also didn't have, uh, he has some experience, but not like a lot of super relevant experience. I think he has some, uh, well, we'll let him dive into that himself, but long story short, uh, in about three months time, uh, I guess this time last month in September, uh, he just received his offer. And so definitely wanted to um, get him on here and talk to you guys a little bit about his process and how he was able to kind of, you know, get up to speed so quickly and overcome the challenges that were in front of him. So Grant, I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to be on here with us today and uh, congratulations on your offer. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so um, in terms of the background, you described it pretty well. Um, I'm a fourth year finance student, and in terms of uh, relevant experience, um, I really didn't have too much. Um, I had some project management experience at a middle market um, IT firm, and then I worked at Coca-Cola as a business analyst, and I did some work um, with accounting. Um, for two months with a small firm, mm -hmm. but um, in terms of relevant experience, I didn't have too much. So mm -hmm. when I was talking to Sam, it really changed my perspective on things until, um, yeah, this September, I got received my offer for SunTrust Robinson Humphrey as an investment banking analyst for their portfolio management division. So pretty excited about that. Yeah. That's awesome. So uh, you mentioned that you were a fourth year. So just so we clarify for people, um, the offer you received is for a summer internship offer, not a full-time offer, right? Yeah, it's a summer internship offer because of my other co-op experiences. Um, my graduation date got pushed back to May 2021, 20, so five years. Yeah. Got it, got it. And can we tell people what school you go to? Uh, yeah, Georgia Tech. Yeah, yeah, so so Grant goes to a school um, that has this co-op co-op structure, which some of some other schools around the country have this as well. But uh, basically, for a co-op, um, you guys get to take some time off during the school year to go do internships and things like that, right? Uh yes, yep. Um, so how many semesters do you guys take off for that? Um, so for my co-ops, um, it was a bit unique. Um. For for my project management uh, internship, I actually uh, had did part time school and part time work, um, and for my business analyst uh, co op at Coke, um, I also uh, did part time as well. Mm -hmm. But I took off summers uh, to work there, so um, yeah, uh, it pushed me back. Got yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, usually with these schools that have co op programs. <clears throat> you essentially do an extra year in school. You do five years because you spend some time working instead of being in classes, essentially. But the benefit is that you get to graduate with some work experience on your resume, right? Mm -hmm. um, I guess the downside to the co-op program, or at least the ones that I've seen, I know like some other schools that have co-ops are like Northeastern. I think like Drexel has a co-op program. Um, there are probably a few others, but most of the time, these co-op programs, the <clears throat> the opportunities that you have from these programs aren't really like super relevant investment banking internship opportunities. Is that right? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. It's usually for yeah. other uh, yeah. parts. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's like kind of the pros and cons of a pro co-op program. So anyway, that's cool. So you're interning for summer 2020 at SunTrust. And you're gonna graduate in 2021. Um, so like, what made you want to reach out to Wall Street Mastermind in the first place? Like back in June of 2019, like what were you struggling with or what were you worried about? What made you want to reach out? 
Right. So um, in terms of where I was and like that, that time, June, um, I didn't really have know too much about investment banking finance. So I actually saw an ad on uh, Facebook that had a uh, Wall Street mastermind. And when I read through it, I was like really interested. So um, I listened in and um, I wanted to reach out. So that's how I got into Wall Street Mastermind. Um, and when I was talking to you and everything, um, it really showed me a perspective and awareness of where I was um, mm -hmm. in the process because I didn't know too much about it. Um, I just really started recruiting. Um, I just joined the um, investments committee mm -hmm. and um, I started taking finance classes. So I was really starting out with my, uh, m like my interest in finance and investment banking. And, um, when you, when I reached out to you, um, it really taught me, showed me a lot more about what I had to do in the process to get an offer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you had to clarify, you had just learned about investment banking right before you talked to us, but you didn't know too much about it yet. You were just kind of like interested in getting in, but not really knowing how to do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's accurate. Yep. Okay. Got it. And the way you found out about investment banking was because you joined a student organization on campus. Yeah. So I joined the investments committee and um, they talk about it in class investment banking. So it seemed really cool. Um, what is the investment committee? Is that like a student managed investment fund or? Yeah, it's a student invest. Yeah. Student managed investment fund. I think it's like the largest that's what they advertise mm -hmm. um, out of all the colleges. But um, yeah, I'd give you like a background about just investing in general. And then you pitch stocks and so forth um, when you're in the investments committee. Got it. So yeah. I guess the challenge though is that because recruiting for, since you were graduating in May, 2021, you needed a internship for summer 2020. <clears throat> but the recruiting for summer 2020 started in probably what, like February or March of 2019. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so basically, and you found out, you learned about this concept of investment banking around when? Yeah. Like around like March, April. Okay. And then I haven't really started. I didn't really start recruiting. Like I didn't even know the, process was going on while I was that during that time nobody really told me or anything so right because you literally had just heard about it when recruiting I started you didn't know anything about how the recruiting process worked or what the timeline was or what you were supposed to be doing and then like before you knew it three months had passed and now you're in June and then that's when you reached out and then you realized like oh whoa I, I actually uh, I have to jump on this ASAP if I want to be serious about it. Is that kind of what happened? Yeah, that's basically what happened. Yep. Got it. Got it. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm glad you came to us in June because it was like just in the nickel time, I feel like, because, you know, you wait another two or three months, like all the jobs would have been filled up, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, you learned about investment making an investment committee. Um, what about the job? kind of excited you or like what made you want to, I don't know what you wanted to do before that. Um, obviously it wasn't investment banking, but like what made you want to switch over from whatever, whatever it was before to saying, Hey, I, this is something I want to do for my career. Right. So in terms of um, what I wanted to do before investment banking, um, I was pretty much in the air. Um, I, d I had some project management experience Grant. Hey Grant, sorry, I think we lost you there for a second, but uh, the last thing we heard was um, you had some project management experience and then you were saying? Yeah, so I, I didn't really know what I was wanted to do. So I did had some project management experience. Um, I had some analytics experience from Coke. So I was thinking more about like the IT realm. Um, that's where I was thinking about going in terms of business. But when I joined the investments committee and I took like the 
intro finance classes, um, I realized that um, investment banking and finance is a challenge. Um, I really like numbers and so forth. So I thought it was a really good opportunity to challenge myself. Um, and when I joined the invest investments committee, I learned, I love learning more about finance and so forth. So that's what really got me into investment banking. Got it. Okay. So like the nature of the work um, was something that you felt like you could be excited about um, and, and a job that you would enjoy um, since obviously we, once you, once you graduate, you spend most of your time at work and you want to make sure that <clears throat> you're really doing something that <clears throat> you enjoy doing or else it's hard to be good at it. Right. Yep. Exactly. Got it. Okay. Um, that makes sense. And so what, uh, from the time you found out about banking, let's say back in like March, um, until you came to us in around June for those three months, like what were you kind of doing to learn more about banking and, or prepare for the recruiting process? Like what other resources were you using? Um, I didn't do too much in terms of I just looked around the internet sometimes um, saw some YouTube videos on ba investment banking but there is no real um, structure about um, everything I needed to know um, until I talked to you so that was really helpful yeah mm -hmm. okay so like, did you, had you done like, had you worked on your application materials at all? Or did you do any networking or study for interviews? Or did you do any of that? Or were you just like, when you were watching YouTube videos, for example, like what kind of YouTube videos were you watching? Is it like financial modeling videos or what were you, what were you kind of looking up? Um, it was basically like overview of what is investment banking. Um, it wasn't too much about financial modeling. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, w I went to some info sessions. I actually went to, like, a Bank of America info session. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't – the process wasn't very clear to me. Um, I didn't really prep for any technicals. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Um, so then you came into Wall Street Mastermind um in june and then kind of like talk to us about kind of your process and washing mastermind and like what do we work on what did you, what do we help you with like what what did you learn i guess right so i really learned like a lot of different things um i know you start out with your resume so i learned a lot about how to improve my resume and um it really uh Wall Street mastermind really helped me with my networking as well um Gave me like structure on how to use LinkedIn as a tool and um, how to reach out to people. Um, I thought that was really helpful because I didn't do that before I came into Wall Street Mastermind. Mm -hmm. um, also, in terms of technicals, it helped me from that viewpoint, um, having in information flow to me instead of me reach me reaching out to like find different aspects of information. Um, mm. It it really helped me, um, yeah, learn, uh, learn all these things that I needed to know for the application process and for recruiting. Mm -hmm. And whenever I needed help, um, I know I knew you were right there to help me mm -hmm. and having access to always communicate with somebody, um, about what I need to know, what, um, what was important. Um, that was crucial. I thought. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. So, on the networking side, I think prior to Wall Street Mastermind, like you mentioned, you have gone to like eight or nine, or sorry, nine or nine. You had gone to like a, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, you had gone to like a Bank of America info session, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then I think at that point, you had only talked to maybe, it was like eight or nine people, right? Right, Up yeah. To that point. Um, but none of those conversations really led anywhere or resulted in anything, right? Like it didn't feel very fruitful for you. Fruitful. Yeah. Um, it, it was mainly talking like on a firm, like apply online and so forth. So it wasn't like very important connections, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
so then like what changed about your networking approach and and kind of the outcomes you were getting after you kind of learned what you learned in our program like what what do you feel like was the biggest change there um i think the biggest change was like thinking about who i could contact um using linkedin um to contact a lot of people um like after i joined the program i was able to have a lot of phone calls with a lot of different um bankers just to give perspective um i even reached out to like some people i knew um from my family wise, I reached out to like family, friends and so forth. Mm-hmm. So um, I thought that was crucial to have like a greater awareness of everything. Um, and also the opportunities that I'm having fo- like phone networking, uh, phone calls with um, bankers could have um, in terms of them helping you in the process mm-hmm. forward. Um, yeah, I thought that was, yeah, that was crucial to me um, applying to jobs and um, getting through the process. Yeah. How many people would you say you reached out to in that three month period? Right. So I think I reached out, like I had phone calls with like 20, 15 to 20 people. Um, but those were like pretty, um, pretty meaningful phone calls. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. Um, so basically you, uh, got the number of conversations up, probably like doubled it, uh, in the same amount of time, but more importantly, the quality of those conversations were a lot better because you now knew what to talk to people about and like how to kind of, uh, direct the conversation to go to in, in, in the direction that you wanted to go in. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty accurate. And it was also, yeah, I knew what to talk about with them. I knew, uh, just more of the mindset of getting through a conversation with them mm-hmm. and it was more one-on-one basis than like an info session. So, mm-hmm. um, Got that, it. yeah. Cause the eight or nine people before were you just met them at an info session. It wasn't like a in-depth conversation or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, and then in terms of technicals, were you pretty much starting from scratch then? Like when you came into the program, since it sounds like you hadn't done any preparation on that side yet. Yeah, I didn't do much preparation except for the, um, except for the materials I learned in investments committee. But in terms of technicals, I didn't have much till, um, Till then, yeah. Got it. So, what do you think is like the biggest benefit of learning it from a program like this as opposed to, um, I don't know, say just studying on your own and maybe reading a guide or watching some videos on YouTube? Like, what's the biggest difference? Yeah, I think the biggest difference is like that communication with you. Like, if I had any questions on technicals, I knew I could reach out to you. Um, and have like real life experience for these technicals Mm -hmm. because whenever you read a guide, it could be like overwhelming. But if you have somebody to ask questions to and them being able to answer you um, was really crucial. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So having that feedback loop um, so that you can actually uh, have someone point out the things that maybe you're not able to see yourself which is why sometimes you get stuck on a certain question or whatever. Um, and that just kind of accelerates the, the preparation process for you, which is, I guess for you was important given you were already pretty behind in the timeline. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Got it. That makes sense. Um, and uh, what about, uh, what about your behavioral interviews? Like, can you talk about that a little bit? Like how did you feel about your behavioral skills coming in and then, uh, and then after you finish the program. Yeah. So in terms of behaviorals, um, I know that um, I didn't have too much experience practicing my behaviorals. Um, I had a lot of interviews before the program with like different um, positions. Um, but when I got to the program, I really learned a lot more about 
what I needed to say in my behaviorals, um, the story I needed to portray, um, and how I would come across as like somebody that they'd want to have in their program. Um, so it, I think being in this program really structured my um, behaviorals to make it sound better um, and make it easier for them to understand. Mm. Um, it's probably not like one of those things that you, one, not one of the primary things that you came into the program for, just just because most people when they come to the program, maybe like for example, maybe you're probably really worried about your technical skills but then for your behavioral skills, like you said, you had, you had, you've had behavioral interviews before. And so you probably felt like you could do fine there. Right. Right. Um, but usually as is the case with you, once you've gone through your behavior answers and showed you what you could be doing or what you should be doing instead, um, it's only then that you realize how much better or how much more, room for improvement there still was for all of your behavioral answers, right? This is like, with the behavioral answers, is one of those things where, unlike the technicals, um, it's harder to realize when you still need to improve it because you don't, it's hard for you to identify what's wrong with your own behavioral answers when you're the one that's looking at it, right? Exactly, yeah, I would agree with that, um, yeah. Got it, and would you say that I mean, during your interview process uh, with SunTrust, like, what was kind of the split between uh, the behaviorals and the technicals? Like, did they ask you more behaviorals or more technicals, or was it pretty even? Yeah, so during my interview for SunTrust, I actually had to do um, a model, a financial model for them. Mm -hmm. So that was really a lot of the technical portion of the interview. Mm -hmm. But other than that, we talked about my model for like five minutes and then the rest of the time was all behavioral. So it was actually the SunTrust interview was actually all pretty much a all behavioral interview. Yeah. Mm, got it. So that's, um, that's interesting, right? Because a lot of times people, uh, are so worried about the technicals, but what I always tell people is that the more important part of the interview is actually your behaviorals, right? Um, yeah. which in this case is 95% of your interview was behaviorals and mm -hmm. you didn't have very good behavioral answers, then someone else probably would have gotten the job over you. Right. Yeah. They're definitely um, going to hire you because of your behaviorals. Yeah. Right. right. And I mean, the group that hired you, like, weren't you like their top candidate or their favorite candidate or whatever, like they want to, they got their offer to you as soon as possible because they wanted to make sure that um, you took their offer, right? Yeah. So yeah, when I was talking to them, they um they said we'll update you shortly, but um, in actuality, they were calling their boss, like everybody, to make sure, letting them know I was their top candidate. And they called me like pretty much like an hour after they sent an email to me about updates. I was like, they were like really excited for me to be a candidate saying that like I was their top choice. Um, so that was a good confidence boost for sure. Yeah. Wow. So you got the offer one hour after you left the interview. Um, not one hour after the interview, one hour um, after they finished their like feedback session. Uh, I see. Which was like a few days later. Yeah. Got it. Basically, as soon as as soon as they possibly could, basically, it was like um, you were the first offer they extended. Yeah. And when I told them um, I really like SunTrust and I was I really wanted to sign after I got the offer, they were like really excited. So, yeah, got it. Got it. So it's, That's awesome, man. And I mean, I think, again, like for you to. Like being, being a group or a bank's top candidate, like that, it all comes down to really your interviewing skills, right? Like, or, and then partially it's your, for your networking too. Like I know you had to um, go to like a, kind of like a dinner function with the team as well, right? Um, and so you had to be in more of a social setting with them. Is that right? Yeah. So right after the interview, like that night, I did, we had like a networking session. Um, it was a little bit easier to be honest because it was a lot of Georgia Tech alumni. 
Mm. So um, I could relate to them with that. But um, yeah, I had to learn how to, yeah, it was a good opportunity to show, showcase my like social skills as well. So. Right. Right. And, and, and that's like how you interact with people in that type of setting, you know, at a dinner setting, which is different from an interview setting, but in a way it's still kind of an interview because you know, you're still being evaluated and they're still kind of constantly watching your every move and you have to kind of adapt to the environment, but still come off, um, very professional yet likable at the same time. And that's also part of kind of what we cover in our networking module too, in terms of just all the etiquette and best practices and, and even just how, how to have those conversations. Right. Yeah. And you know? being, yeah, being loose and casual, um, like being sure you could connect with them as well. I think that's really important in yeah. those networking sessions too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Very cool, man. Well, so um, do you have any last minute advice for um, our listeners who are listening right now, who are maybe still going through recruiting or maybe they're in a similar situation as you where they started the process really late or they didn't find out about banking until later on. Uh, Maybe they're feeling behind. Like what kind of uh, advice do you have for them? Yeah, I definitely think um, even in whatever situation you are, whether it be like non-target school or like something that you think um, is pushing you behind other people, just think like anything is possible. Um, Everybody has like the ability to do it um, in their college experience um, and just to keep working at it. I know that for me... um, it was definitely a more of an uphill battle, but, um, if you keep working at it, keep trying hard, um, and getting the information you need to be successful, um, eventually the chances are you'll, you'll succeed. So, um, to advice for everybody, um, yeah, just keep your head high and keep, keep working. Got it. Cool, man. Awesome. Um, it's great advice. So, Guys, um, you know, as you can tell from Grant's experience, you know, a lot of times, because I talk to a lot of students who come to me and they feel like they're already late. Uh, Maybe they're coming to me as a third year. Sometimes I even have clients coming to me as a fourth year. Um, I even have clients come to me like right after they graduated senior year, which is really, really late. Um, But in all of those instances, when the client is committed enough, we've been able to help them break into investment banking um, in the shortest amount of time possible, right? Uh, And so the key, I think, is that, like Grant said, one, um, to not give up so easily, right? To kind of believe in yourself and believe that it can be done. Um, And then secondly, it's getting the help that you need to really accelerate the, the preparation process for you, right? Because if you're behind, then, you know, it is a competition. Like you are competing against your other uh, classmates and friends and just, you know, other people, other students who are in the same year as you in school, right? And so if they've been preparing for a long time and you're just starting, um, then what you need to do is, you need to basically come from behind, right? And to come from behind, really the only way to do that is if you're able to be more efficient than they are in all these different things that you have to do, right? Whether it's your application materials or your networking or your technical interview prep or your behavior interview prep. And so you wanna remove um, all the trial and error that you would have had to do on your own because usually that's what sucks up the most time is you're trying to figure things out and you don't really know if you're doing the right things or not and sometimes you are sometimes you're not and if you're not then you're gonna kind of start over and then that's what's wasting a lot of time right versus if you just have a game plan laid out for you you still got to do the work and you still got to go out and execute on it but um, you don't have you don't have to sit there and guess oh what should i be doing next 
And for most of the things that you're doing, you just do it once and then you see the results that you want and then you move on to the next, next thing. Right. And so, um, that's really what, you know, we try to help all of our clients with here at Wall Street Mastermind. So if you are interested in uh, something like that, or if you need help with that, then, uh, you know, I would encourage you to reach out to us. Um, you can do so by scheduling a free strategy session to start. Um, and you do that at www.wallstreetmastermind.com slash apply. Um, the street is abbreviated to ST, so it's wallstmastermind.com slash apply. And uh, what will happen is you get to pick a time on our calendar that works for you. You'll hop on a call with uh, a member of our team. We're going to walk through kind of your recruiting process and the timeline and what that looks like and what are your goals and what you've been doing up to this point and <clears throat> where you feel like you're currently falling short and what it is that you need help with. And then we'll help you map out kind of a course of action or game plan that we think would make the most sense for you because um, really that game plan is going to be different for everybody, right? There's no one size fits all solution here, which is why we need to have this phone call for it to be actually helpful to you. Right. Um, and then from there, you know, if we mutually feel like, Hey, Wall Street Mastermind is uh, the best fit for helping you make that happen. Then we can obviously talk about what that might look like. But a lot of times, um, you know, we may not be the best fit to help you, or we might not have bandwidth to help you, which is totally cool too. Um, a lot of students have talked to us on these strategy sessions and have gotten just so much value. It's kind of like Grant said, like even just from talking to us on that first call, he got so much more clarity on what he needed to do, right? And a lot of people can just take, um, take the advice that we give them and go out and run with them, implement it on their own and still see a lot of success that way, right? So either way, Look, the strategy session is free. You've got nothing to lose. I would highly encourage you guys to um, just have a conversation with us and you're going to get a lot of actionable advice. More, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident saying like more than uh, what you would get in uh, most of your networking conversations with bankers who are, you know, very busy and usually keep their advice pretty high level and not super specific or tailored, right? So um, book that call, come talk to us. Uh, we'd love to help you in any way, shape, or form. And then uh, let's get you guys rocking on the, on the way to, uh, to getting an investment banking offer. So, um, Grant, I want to thank you for taking the time to hop on with us today and just share your experiences with everyone. Um, obviously, you made a ton of progress in just three short months, you know, coming in with very little to no knowledge about how the entire recruiting process worked to three months later, later having an offer from a very reputable bank like SunTrust. So uh, I just want to congratulate you again, uh, again on that and uh, look forward to staying in touch and seeing all the success you have going forward. Definitely. Thank you so much, Sam. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. All right, guys, that will be it for today. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in and we'll be back with uh, more of these in, in the near future. All right. Thanks guys. Bye.